earlier I made a video about what is wrong with semantic versioning. And I, I want to give you a very specific example. Harbor, which is a tool that's used by most major enterprises, to my knowledge, for hosting is basically a Docker replacement to host containers within the enterprise. I would argue that a good 80 to 90 percent of major enterprises that use their own hosting are using Harbor. It's a very popular tool, uh, even though they've chosen to not upgrade their security uh, and keep it up to date. But but let me but another here's another interesting thing. 35% of Harbor is, by the definition of semantic versioning, dependent on unstable software. And let me justify that statement. Here's a semantic version line. Uh, once again, as for your reminder, we talked about this pretty extensively. Uh, point number four of the semantic versioning specification says, major versions uh, beginning with zero dot are for initial development only. Anything may change at any time. The public API should not be considered stable. In other words, anything that begins with a zero dot is by definition unstable according to the semantic version specification. And and when you go look, you do the math here. So this is the harbor. I did the little math here. And if you go look at the go.mod file in harbor, you can see, and I'm just picking on harbor, you can see all of these things that have V0, some of them even have a version. Um, you have libtrust, you have, you know, all these, you have other things that have versions, but most of them don't have versions. And this is, again, I'm just picking on Harbor. This is not, this is not uncommon, but it, they, I went ahead and did the math and I counted 70 of the package dependencies are on unstable software, according to the semantic version definition, which is any version zero dot. And, and then you go through, you do the math and you realize that, you know, this is a huge problem. This is a huge problem. And in order to fix it, they'd actually have to give their software a version. But as I said, people don't want to give their software a version because they don't want to commit to a public API and they don't want to have to be able to, they want to be able to make changes anytime they want. The other thing that's actually pretty troubling here is that according to, um, according to Google, I'm sorry, according to go, and this is very, very important. Uh, according to the Go import compatibility rule, and this is the reason for the Go module thing, which I'm getting ready to make a video about, here I'm going to read it right from the specification from Go. If an old package and a new package have the same import path, the new package must be backward compatibility, backward compatible with the old package. Did you hear that? If an old package and a new package have the same import path, they must be compatible with the old package. Well, that directly contradicts the, the specification of Semver with regard to zero dot. And this is where this is a, such a big, big mess. Because if you go look at the actual definition, it says here that, um, that a major version is for initial development and anything may change at any time. So, Anything that begins with a zero dot should be able to change at any time. But when you read the Go and compatibility thing, it doesn't matter what your package is. If your package is produced at all and has the same import path, even if it's a zero dot, it must be backward compatible with the other one. So, so the semantic version definition says zero dot by definition does not have to be backward compatible. And this policy in the import compatibility rule in Go says it must be backward compatible no matter what. And so we have a ton of Go libraries out there. It's a huge mess because we have all these package dependencies and everything where the developers thought if they, first of all, if they even know what versioning is, most of them don't. All those versions that you saw that don't have any version at all, these are because of, you know, people just not knowing and not tagging. They don't know to set a tag, get tag on their version. But the point is that even when they do, such as in the case of, oh, I don't know, let's pick on Go Open API errors, you think the Open API would care about the Semver specification being a project based on setting Open API standards? Apparently not. So they, their Semver is zero, which means they, that's why they got dot 21 because they reserve the right to be able to change anything they want. So what we have is we have, in conclusion, we have a problem with the semantic version specification being fundamentally at odds with the Go specification for backward compatibility between modules. And we have a number of, I mean, an unusually large, probably in the millions at this point, number of packages that are used by production software that are following 
some hodgepodge in the between those two where they think they can get away with making changes because they're following the semantic version rules when in fact the actual rule from the go compatibility uh specification for go itself says thou shalt not make any backward compatibility changes even if you put a zero dot in front of it that means if you keep the same import path you better damn well change it and from that we get slash v3 which we'll talk about We'll talk about it in a separate video, but this slash v3 doesn't even exist. It doesn't even exist. It's not, it's not a thing. It's just a way of causing the mo Go module itself to be different. Let me show you. Uh, we actually have a case of this. This is a different conversation. So here we have, we just picked randomly. We picked Rob Fig slash Cron. I don't know who that is. And as you can see inside of this repo, there is no there's no v2 or v3 or whatever but we can tell from the tag that it's supposed to be a v3 and so when we open up the go.mod file we see the v3 here and for an average beginner they're going to be like what the hell i mean i thought this was the actual path to the source code why isn't there a v3 bit of source code down there and the reason is because this is just to cause a distinction to be present in the go.mod files themselves this is a real pain. This is a big problem for Go and for anything that uses semantic versioning. And hopefully that gives you something to deal with. There is no easy answer. Um, but to do this properly, you probably want to make sure that you follow semantic versioning. And quite frankly, I think now that I've seen this, I think that more and more packages that I produce are going to have a one dot, a V1. Because that way, as soon as you put a one on there, if you, if you do a V1, as your Go release, then you are now synchronizing the requirements for Semver and for um, and for um, Go, the Go import package uh, thing. Because because but if you leave it at zero, you got this kind of nebulous inner space. Which one is it? Are you going to make a breaking change on me because you use the zero dot Semver specification, even though the Go the Go import package path definition says you can't make any changes, even if it's a zero dot. You know, those two things are at odds. But as soon as you put a V1 on the thing, now they're in agreement. Now they're in agreement. So I guess what I'm arguing for is if you have something that you want other people to use, don't be afraid to put a V1 on there and just know what you're doing. That's all.